Welcome to Live at the Legislature, the virtual version of Live at the Legislature. And in these unprecedented times, this is the new normal. Joining me this morning is Representative Della Albilati. She is the majority leader for the House of Representatives. She also is uh, a member on the House Select Committee on the Economy and Financial Preparedness. The committee met um, just yesterday and heard some very interesting and perhaps um, sobering facts. But before we begin, Representative Bellotti, can you briefly describe to us um, this committee and why it's there? So the House Select Committee to look at the question of how do we get out of the COVID crisis and look at and monitor the economic uh, and financial preparedness of our state. And yesterday we heard from um, Carl Bonham from You Hero, and he had some interesting things to say about what needs to be done when we're finally let out of our houses to restart the economy. Can you um, talk a little bit about that and what your takeaway was from that report? So there, were, there were two main takeaways from Mr. Bonham's report. You know, we're going to have to be able to actively test, trace, and isolate people before we really be able to restart our economy. I cannot underscore the importance of public health and active monitoring because we're going to have to understand that this is, like you said, the new normal. Um, there may be a COVID-20, a COVID-21, so we really have to learn from this experience and understand how public health is going to play a big part in making sure that we can avoid this kind of thing again. The second takeaway is that we're going to really have to phase in an approach, and that's the kind of thing that we're going to be talking about. You know, it's not going to be a focus on reopening the tourist economy. We really have to look at how are we going to open up the local non-tourist economy first? What are local businesses going to have to do to position themselves in this new world? What are the kind of testing mechanisms we're going to have to have? What are the kinds of public health uh, measures we're going to have to have in place so that we can uh, operate in this new normal? But I think this is going to take us, and I, what I like about the uh, select committee is that we're focusing in on these questions and pivoting to this issue of how do we uh, identify when we're ready based upon the testing that we know that's happening, the ability of our hospitals to handle whatever new cases may be coming about, and whether or not we're able to actively monitor um, uh, individuals. Because we, what we don't want to happen is resurgence that we see in some communities where they may have opened up too early. Well, in, you know, in that vein, it seems like for um, some of our businesses, for example, yesterday, the restaurant um, industry representative said that while they are doing takeaways and stuff, it's still not enough for them. So they put in a special request to the to the committee to ask them if they could start also including liquor into the thing. And I think you've been appointed, you've been point person on that particular request. Sure. So what we're seeing is that under the orders now, whether or not there are some regulations that can allow things like the direct sale of different things so that it can complement what the local businesses are doing. You know, we're seeing all these kinds of requests pop up, whether it's in the restaurant uh, industry, food producers who are uh, asking us about questions about nurseries being allowed to sell seeds, uh, whether farm workers are considered essential workers. Uh, we we're, we're seeing all these questions pop up. So I think between the House and the Senate, we're dealing with some of these questions. And I think this actually highlights a real opportunity to see how is it that the local economy can kind of be reset and reconfigured to be able to operate now while we're in stay-at-home orders. But as we come out of this, what are the kinds of uh, protective measures we're going to have to have in place so that our local economy is safe and people feel comfortable in opening it up. So that that would mean um, a beefing up, as you said, of our public health system at, and specifically the Department um, of Health, correct? Yes, and I cannot underscore how important the work of uh, Dr. Sarah Park and her team has been in this effort. Really confident contact tracing, which is something that we're going to have to be, be, make sure they're able to do moving forward. Again, you know, when we move into a new world, and again, pandemics, these kinds of viruses may be with us. We know that we're already looking down to the next flu season. How are we going to be able to monitor this? And it's really going to be Dr. Sarah Park and the Department of Health having the resources to ensure that we're actively monitoring contact tracing, testing, and then isolating if we need to. 
because we don't want this to get out of hand. Uh, the stay at home orders has really shut down our local economy and people are suffering. So we need to understand what are the public health measures we need to put in place to ensure that we don't face this again. And I'll tell you, Carolyn, you know, between the experts that we have sitting on the committee with you, Hero, we have folks from Bank of Hawaii, we have folks from um, the hotel industry, from the nonprofit industry. We have really great minds focusing on these issues of our economy and how do we make our economy and our community more resilient. We know people are hurting. So we know that we also have to um, uh, draw down all of those federal monies, the care monies, and how are we going to repurpose, use those monies. First, the mo those monies have to go out in immediate relief to people we know who have lost their jobs. But then we also have to start thinking about recovery and rebuilding. How do we, we reset our structures so that we can have a stronger local economy before we open it up to the tourism economy? Well, I understand one of the key things that the committee focused on early on was um, in the area of CIP and shovel ready projects. We've got shovel ready construction projects ready to go. Representative Kyle Yamashita from Maui um, has been overseeing that for the finance committee. He updated us on, on the, the list. You wanna, can you kind of give us an update, a brief update on where we stand on shovel ready projects? Sure. Uh, sure. Representative sure. Yamashita has been doing a wonderful job in managing and tracking where our CIP projects are. And really, you know, one of the industries that's been able to continue while we've been in stay at home orders has been the construction industry. So we know that there are critical public uh, capital improvement projects that need to be done. And we have put to, or Yamashita, Representative Yamashita has put together a list that represents um, over. 1.3 billion already uh, funded by the legislature, and we have projects and ready on all islands. So 348 million for Hawaii Island, Kauai has 111 million, Maui has 200 million, and Oahu 1.8 billion. So these are going to be things that we need. We needed them a while ago, but if we can make sure that they're shovel ready, uh, when we can really ramp up um, and really get back, the construction industry will be a critical pillar in making sure our economy moves forward. Well, I want to, not everything is doom and gloom. We have been seeing throughout this whole episode, the community and people rallying around to help each other, do whatever they can for, the, for our first responders, for healthcare workers. So on a good note, the committee heard yesterday about um, a program called Hotel for Heroes. It's run by um, the HLT, HLTA. Sorry, Mufi Hanuman, I think I screwed up the name and HTA. Tell the people what we learned yesterday. So there are 33 hotels statewide that are going to be partnering with our first responders, our healthcare workers. These are the folks who are on the front lines. And when they work with COVID patients in the hospitals, they don't want to go home and infect their families. So this is a critical partnership to ensure that infection is not flowing through our community. And it's also a way to help basically our heroes. So that's the Hotel for Heroes program. And I cannot say enough about how private partners have really been stepping up. Well, thank you, Representative Bilotti. Um, we look forward to the next committee hearing. Any final thoughts? No, nope. let's turn it over to the Senate. OK, and they've got a surprise for you. You're really going to love it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us at Virtual Live at the Legislature. We will see you next week, Tuesday. Aloha.
What are you doing? We have to go. I'm gonna be late for work. It's Tuesday morning. I gotta record live at the legislature on Alelo. Senate and House leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol? So just watch it on the news tonight. Come on, let's go. Hey, this is like getting the news before it's news. If only I could get this remote to work. There. Can we go now? No DVR? No problem. Watch Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Channel 49.